So welcome to the first step of the Hydra Stomper helmet that I'll be working on for the next few weeks, I think. Um, I'm going to be starting with the actual dome, the top of the helmet, the main shape. Uh, it's uh, it's cylindrical, obviously, and it's got a nice dome to the top of it. So in order to do the dome, I've got this piece here. Um, if you've seen Evil Ted's tutorial, you know this is pretty much the same thing. It's If you look at a beach ball and you look, it's got the eight... Um, there are little segments to it normally that reach different colours. This is what you would see. Just stop here because if you can, I would recommend um, heat forming these. So if you've got a hot air gun or something, heat them up a little bit and then most people would have a pommel or something if they do this um, that often. It's called a pommel. Anyway, normally people have a disc um, or a semi-sphere like this with a stick coming out of it and it would be wedged to a desk or something and then you'd heat this up and you'd form it over and that would give it um, a rounded kind of shape like so because I don't have a heat gun because I'm back home without any of my tools and I'm away from the workshop at university I'm just going to be doing this and using force instead and just pushing this metal bauble that I bought um, around Christmas time because it was a coffee thing and it had coffee stuff on the inside of it. Uh, just to basically dome it out a bit and you can see there it starts to get this dome shape to it and I'll be doing that to all the pieces just so it domes it a little bit better uh, when I glue it all together. Okay so I finished the main shape of the dome um, here's a look at the old one geometric not rounded I hate it. This one uh, much more round it's about as smooth as my brain Beautiful. Uh, there's a few cracks and things that I'll fill with a bit more glue, but for the most part, you just squeeze them together and they rejoin. Or they don't rejoin, that's fine as well. A uh, bit of super glue will fix those little holes. Um, there's another little one there. But yeah. Um, somehow, I managed to overclock this, so there's a little bit more here, uh, but I'll just take my scalpel or a pair of scissors and cut this excess little curve off so it's a perfect flat dome. Um, Yes, very nice shape. Also, if it was Captain Carter, this is beginning to take the pattern of the Union Jack. So, perfect. Now, for anyone that starts off by making something like this, I do recommend getting some reference images. Ooh. Lovely, apparently there's contact adhesive left on my cardboard base. Um, these are some reference images I've printed off. I've just outlined all the areas where there are... Uh, recesses, um, areas that stick out, or just different panel lines, just so I know where the cut will have to go in the uh, template or the outline that I'll draw onto the phone. I've also done the same for the back, just here, which is a little bit less, there's just the green, um, and then this faint line you can see here, um, that's the backpack, or the uh, thrusters, whatever you want to call them, or just the neck area, um, so I can't see past the rest of this. This is Marvel Legends, by the way. Um, so yeah, somewhere under here, this green does stop. But I've got the reference, obviously, of the front here. So pairing two images together, I'll be able to work out where that green, that olive green stops compared to the army green. Now, for those of you that are observant, you'll notice a Dremel in the middle of the screen. Um, this is how I'm going to round off all the areas where there is the contact adhesive left over and any sharp corners that I can still notice by touching it. But this is essentially our bucket. It just about still fits on screen. Um, this is a good shape, however, for some reason it is absolutely oval, as you might be able to see there. So I'm going to try and heat form it a little bit at some point so it's a little bit more, um, well, essentially like this, and I did want this to be the front of it, because it's got quite a good shape, but the Hydra Stomper has a, I believe it's similar to the Ironmonger, where it's slightly longer um, from front to back than it is from side to side, so it'd make more sense for me to use this as the front or the back, um, and keep these as the sides. It would also stop the panel lines that run all the way across the front of the head, but it would give one that runs straight down the face if I can't sand it off properly. So I'm going to make sure that I sand that. I've got a sanding bit on the front of here. My Dremel isn't on at the moment, it's useful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also sand this edge down so it's got a nice smooth bevel to it. Um, 
yeah, and I'll sand all of these glue lines so hopefully I can get it down to just a smooth um, transition between the two foams. Right, so after a lot of sanding and this lovely noise, um, I didn't really use this, that's 1000 grit sandpaper, let go in there. I did use the sanding sponge um, and it works surprisingly well to sand out all of like the, um, it's quite hot still, some of the uh, shapes that are left from this, like any hard edges or anything. But you can see most of our edges gone, you can still see them, they show up on camera and it doesn't look very nice now with the pattern because it looks all scuffed up. With a bit of paint it should become all uniform again. You can't really feel any of these edge seams anymore. Um, so while you can see them, that does mean a lick of paint should just cover them entirely. There are a few scratches as well from the, where the hard edge of my sandpaper sponge kind of scratched it up a bit. But no, for the most part there's maybe a little bit here that I'll try and sand off. You can see that shiny area there. That actually blended a tiny bit better. But no, apart from that, you can't feel this seam anymore. You can't feel this seam either. Uh, or this one. So they shouldn't show up in the paint. That there will be the face. You can just about feel this, so I might need to use some filler on that first. But yeah, I'm going to mark out all the shapes for the face and then cut them out. Um, and I'll add some spaces behind to show where they go. I'll come back once I've done all the edge lines and everything. And I might wait until after I've cut all the face shape out of this. Now for those of you wondering how I do like these kind of templates that I know fit properly and roll around the whole um, face sculpt. I essentially take a piece of paper, I take my mould, you might be able to see some of the lines on there that I've cut in and drawn in already, um, I wrap it around just like this and then I'll use two drawing pins or these are just the normal board pins and I'll pin it in and then because it's on the shape and I've cut it to size normally so you'll see this is just slightly uh, thinner than an A4 sheet, I can draw directly onto this and get my shape out. I'll only do half of it because I can mirror it and it makes it more accurate. But yeah, you can see here that I've got this all set up now. This is how I do most of my templates. And you might not be able to see, but if I separate this, I have already lightly cut into that and cut all the way through. Um, I'll go through and cut all the way into this. And then all of these edges, like, well, obviously all of these, I will round off a bit. And then I will glue them back together with contact adhesive, so there'll be a nice rounded kind of um, indentation that runs the full way through this. Um, glue it back together, and then you'll have the nice kind of rolling seam line that you get um, on the uh, Hydra Stomper. I will also reinforce the inside, so I'll use some thinner foam strips uh, once all of it's glued back together. And they'll just run along the inside of these seam lines like this. Just as, because obviously it'll be um, a thinner amount when you round it, you don't have quite as much surface area to connect the two pieces back together. So just supporting the inside will stop it tearing or coming apart more easily. Um, I do still have to do the details on top of the head, but overall I'm quite happy with the way this is going. I do still need to do the chin as well, because the chin um, kind of bends inwards, but it's a panel that's been bent in and faces that way. I believe it is, anyway, yeah it is. Okay, you can see what I mean by the chin piece here, just this little bit here, um, it is a kind of bevel that comes out at an angle like this, so I'll have to cut a separate piece of that, you can see I've drawn it on here, I just haven't cut that out yet, so I will cut all the pieces out, um, bevel the edges, and show you the end product before I go and do all the bits on the top of the head. Okay, I've taken my phone out on the tripod just to show this bit, um, I've made the eye holes bigger, I say bigger, I've just cut out those um, slots that were in it because they'll be recessed further back and because they have to be further back I'll probably have to make a set of bigger ones. Um, I've done the beveled edges, not that you can really see it because camera in focus, there we go. Slight bevel on them and the result that, that gives us is this here. You can see we've got that nice kind of indent that runs the full way through. That runs all the way around, I haven't finished gluing the back yet, I need to finish that. Um, I've glued up to here and there. So I've only got a tiny bit left to do on this portion and that'll be that finished. You can see I've done some reinforcements with other sheets of foam and I've actually used hot glue because um, it's only the inside and it's only a reinforcement. It's not a like a, what do you call it, a strength or a stress, it's not a high stress area um, for this piece. 
I've also cut out the mouth because I'll have to be recutting it anyway um, because I need to do a wider one and then the teeth will have to be cut out as well or the mouth holes have to be cut out as well so yeah this will go in the bin essentially but I'll keep it just for uh, knowing where that edge is you can see I've cut out the chin piece and I have that just here I've also beveled the edges on this um, I left more material there just so I can um, test as I go along to see until it fits because I have to put it at an angle um, and it's such a specific angle that it's at um, it's very unique to the way it's shaped so I have uh, left it just so I know I can keep cutting down until I reach it I don't want to cut too much and then um, not be able to fix it I, so I'm just slowly cutting more and more until I'm happy just for a quick checkup of how this is looking before I glue it all together. Um, yeah, fairly happy with this. It is looking a bit like Iron Munger. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this bevel is going to look. Obviously, this, according to all the images, is a darker green. This is more of like an olive green, and this is kind of an army green. So, yeah, the panel line is going to really help with the masking tape and everything. Oh, I've also got my knife just kind of stuck here, it needs sharpening because it doesn't kind of sink into the cardboard rail anymore. But anyway, this is where I am so far. Okay, so I kind of forgot to record some bits of the video here. Um, basically, all I've really done is I've glued this all back together. I can't remember if I had these recesses added in already, but you can see these kind of recesses, which is just the outline of the eyes. Um, and you can see what piece I've got because I did have it on the cardboard just like a few seconds ago. Just this piece essentially and then cut that out and glued it through the back i've also then cut out this top piece here i just kind of eyeballed the shape really and then uh, mirrored it to glue that on i just outlined it with a pencil onto the top of the helmet uh took it away uh painted on contact adhesive with this nice little tool that i made out of scrap foam um painted that onto the bottom and then used my spray on contact adhesive for this and you can see the outline which is just to paint the inside of the actual pad because rather than having to manually paint it I can just blanket it in contact adhesive these I could have made out of um, one piece each uh, instead I made them out of three pieces because I'm incredibly dumb and didn't think about the fact that I could just fold the foam um, yeah I spent way too much time trying to glue these bits and cut them and I even sanded the edges on here to get a rounded edge which I would have got if I'd just done it one piece and folded it. And obviously it's not difficult because you just have this shape and then you draw the little fins that come down and you fold it. Um, so essentially you would just draw this piece as if it was on the side and then you can fold it over. Um, I didn't think of that. Uh, in fact I did and then I forgot that I thought about it and I cut all the pieces out individually. That's just normal contact adhesive to hold it on. Uh, yeah, this is this is the thing. This is it. Um, I'm now going to go and paint it, um, and I know you're not interested in uh, the paint that I'm using, or like the brand, or the contact adhesive or anything, so I'm going to tell you anyway, is what I'm going to do. This is the um, stuff I use, I've already shown you this, this is just the Evo stick. Um, is this actually Bostic? This is a chance this is the Bostic stuff. No, Evo stick's different, isn't it? No, it's Bostic, there you go. Uh, impact contact adhesive, um, instant contact adhesive I might add. I've also got this contact spray adhesive, which is what obviously this white mark is. Um, really useful for if you're doing big parts and it doesn't have to be neat and tidy. Um, Paint-wise, I'm going to be using this to my colour. Um, olive kind of green, what's it called? Dark green I'll be using. Hopefully I've got a darker green. Um, something similar to this with maybe a little bit of grey in for the cheek areas because we know that's a separate colour. And as a base kind of primer, because it's foam and I don't have a heat gun, so I can't um, I can't heat it and kind of, there's a word for it, it's not priming the surface, it's um, a heat treatment that kind of sealing the foam, that's what it does, it seals it so uh, you don't end up with this porous, um, the porous like holes and everything basically you get on uh, foam, it would seal that up, it would make it all smooth. So instead I'm using plaster dip, black plaster dip, just to spray it all over. Um, do a quick once over, it will make it weatherproof and everything for the most part as well. It's a latex based paint. Uh, you'd normally use it on cars because you can peel it off um, if you choose that you don't want it anymore. Which I was going to do at one point for work, but that doesn't matter. 
anyway, I'm going to get on and paint it. I'll show you it maybe once I've done the black plaster zip, or maybe just after I've done the full paint load. Unfortunately, I won't be showing you how to do the eyes. I might do them in a different video, because I do not have any means of getting the blue light-up eyes in it, where I'd still be able to see through it currently. Um, I don't have any electronics that would do that. I don't have any plastic that I could use, and I don't have any wiring or means of... Um, basically, I don't have means of completing it. I could start it, but I wouldn't be able to finish it, which would be pointless. Um, so I might do a separate video where I go over all that. The way you see out of this is um, your eyes kind of sit here and here on the inside, obviously, not on the outside. I don't know why I thought I'd specify it's on the inside. So your vision's quite limited here because this big chunk gets in the way. So you can only really see up out of these eyes. You can't see down. So if you were on stilts, it'd be a problem. However, I thought about that and you can see out of these, these three holes in the teeth, um, which I'll only put a little bit of black screen behind so you can't see all the way in. And when your eyes are here, you can see straight out of here and to your feet, which is really useful for if I am going to be doing stilts with this mech suit. Now anyway, on to painting, and then I will wrap this video up. Okay, I've just done the black coat on it. Um, I've got some different paints to use now. I've got the darker version for the cheek kind of areas. Olive Drab AS6. Um, I believe this is the aircraft paint. Yeah. So I'll be using that. Um, I think the USAAF is obviously the USA Air Force. Um, I think this is just the olive green one. And that'll be for the main body, and I've got two of these. AS14. Um, also, US, well, USA Force, or US Air Force, I don't know uh, quite what that stands for. But I know it's obviously the American um, Forces, which makes sense for the Hydra Stomper helmet. Um, and the whole suit in general. But yeah, you can see this effect that's kind of going on. Um, I like this effect, unfortunately, plus it doesn't seem to dry with it though. It kind of goes all pitted. Um, I've managed to get rid of most of the scratches. There's a few little lines and everything you can see in it. But for the most part, I'm quite happy with um, how this is looking. Hopefully it dries uh, the way it is currently, but I think it will probably show more surface imperfections when it's dry. Uh, yeah, I'll come back when it's uh, been painted green. Basically, I won't come back when it's dry, I'll come back when it's painted green. Save you watching paint dry. Okay, so um, you can probably hear my voice is a bit muffled. I'm pretty sure the helmet on my head to begin with. Um, I can actually see quite a lot in it. Uh, you'll notice where my eyes sit and where the mouth um, piece actually works with my mouth. So, yeah, this is... Oh. <laughs> Move my suitcase out of the way. So this is how it fits. Um, my eyes are just above this bottom rim. My mouth is perfectly in line with this. So when I get some fabric to put in here, I'll be able to breathe straight through it, hopefully, and it'll save. It'll obviously cover up the gap, but also let me um, get the airflow through, so that when I breathe out, it doesn't um, come back up and fog up the lenses once I've got those installed. I just want to show you the movement I've got because I can look down really far. But it's moving up that's an issue because it's, you can see this running into my neck. This is as far as I'll be able to lift my head. Um, so I can still look up, but obviously looking down is the most important part. Oh, now, one thing you might notice is my nose is probably a little bit red. Um, <laughs> I designed this to fit my head and completely forgot that I had a fairly big nose. Um, yeah, so basically my nose touches perfectly on the end of this, on the inside, obviously. So what I might do in the future is use my sanding drum, sanding tool, rotary tool, that's what it is, uh, just to do a little dimple in here where my nose sits, so that I can actually wear it. Because it's like a few millimetres too small per the nose. But the side profile and the front profile I'm really happy with, because normally you make a helmet and it looks too long from the side or too short. This seems to have worked just just as I'd hoped it would. There are obviously some imperfections on it, which I expect from anything that I make. Because if you don't get imperfections, then you're not human, basically. Um, I would also like to point out, I'm 19, so you get uh, professional, obviously, cosplayers and everything um, that have all the tools. I made this in my bedroom, and the highest, I think, the highest price tool I used was a Dremel that I was given by my uncle 
three years ago and the Dremel itself is probably about 10 years old. So that's if that's the best tool I've got, this is, I'm, I'm happy with it basically. This is, I'm, I'm proud of what this is. Um, I'll come in and show you a couple of the um, imperfections in the paintwork, some of the little dents and everything in it from um, me messing up with sanding it. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I'm just going to say now that I won't be doing the eyes, the light up, um, the light up eyes or the screen for the mouth. I'm going to save the eyes for another tutorial in a video where I can go over how I do all the lights for the Iron Man eyes that I do. Um, I've taken the faceplate off that because I want to show something quickly as well. So basically, I went with the matte finish uh, because the military aircraft don't have a glossy finish to them usually. So it made more sense to have it matte finish and it looks that way in the anime. Anime? Animation. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, really happy with the colour contrast. I think the colours have worked out quite nicely. There's, the only issues I really have on the front of the face is this divot here. And you can see some ragged edges here. They weren't like that when I was painting. I think now the paint's set and it's kind of crisped up a bit. It's made them more obvious. You can see them around the eyes as well. Um, they aren't too obvious unless you're really looking for them. And I mean, I'm never really going to be this close to someone that they'd be able to see it. I, you're looking more like this distance. So there isn't a whole lot of an issue with it. Um, the only one that you can really see is this here. But if that's the only issue I have um, with the face, then... I'm happy with that. I can probably fix a lot of this um, ragged edge as well. But yeah, there's obviously like the odd scratch like here um, from the sanding sponge that I couldn't quite fill in. And there's another one here. But the, you don't notice them very much. It's mainly the ones on the back here that you can see. I couldn't get rid of them, but they're on the back of the head and there'll be that whole like tanker kind of thing behind him. So odds are you won't see that anyway if I finish the suit. Um, i trying to think of any other imperfections. For whatever reason, this piece came out perfect. This top that eyeballed cut out piece and sanded um, there is not a single issue with this piece here the paintwork is absolutely perfect on it like there is not an issue with it it slightly rises there you can see the way the light kind of changes shape though but apart from that look at that it's worked exactly as I'd hoped it would uh, the air vents there you can see managed to get a nice bit of symmetry through them um, I don't really think there's anything else for me to talk about here. Apart from the paint, the paint, because it's a matte finished paint and it's on a flexible surface, um, I want to try and show it in a way that you'll be able to see, but I don't want to damage it too much. I can crack the paint. Can you see those cracks running through there? Um, but because I've done it on plaster dip, the minute I let go and rub it, those cracks are gone. Uh, the plaster dip holds it in place, so as soon as it bends, you'll get the cracks. The minute you release, they sink back into the paintwork, so I I am amazed with the fact that I've produced this in four days. Um, this was going to be a three week project for me because I've got three weeks until I go back to university, and I wanted something to keep me busy. I've instead done it in four days, and now I've got even more free time just to watch YouTube videos and things. I will be shipping this to university um, because obviously I'll be finishing the rest of the suit there if I go and uh, do it. it depends on how much time I have on my hands once I'm back um, I do have plans to do the rest but whether or not I get to do it um, I don't know I did also want to show this obviously this is from my Iron Man suit that's back there you can see the difference in paintwork like this thing is awful you see all the lines through it you can actually see the cracking from where I did too many layers and the paint stopped sticking properly or just above my thumb see those weird lines that run through it um, there's this crack on the side of it here. There's cracks in the blue paint. This was an atrocious piece of paintwork on my part. Um, but, you know, it is it is what it is. Even this bit in here wasn't painted properly. This panel, this wasn't primed, I don't think either. That was just chucked in there last minute. What I brought this up to check though, was this is how I make the eyes light up normally. Um, those are going to be way too thin to put into this set of eyes. There'll be about a centimetre gap at the bottom. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to find another way to light that up. Unless I bought two and put them side by side. Uh, and they did the full coverage of the eyes. I'll have to find a way, um, which is another reason I'm not doing that in the video uh, today. It's because I have no way of lighting up the eyes currently. Uh, the only stuff that I could buy for it would take 
I think, a month to arrive from China, or like three weeks, it was saying. At which point I won't be in Jersey, I'll be back in um, university, so I may as well wait until I'm back at uni to try and do the eyes on this. But it also saves me worrying about getting batteries and electronics through the customs of posting. So yeah. Ooh, just knock the camera over. Um, this right here, uh, probably my best work I think that I've done cosplay-wise in quite a while. Um, obviously I am really happy with the group mask that I've got, but that's more of a natural surface kind of thing. And this took much longer, this took uh, weeks to do. And it was made out of older foam, um, wasn't cut properly until the jagged edges on the bottom. So in terms of finishing, I am much happier with how this thing has turned out. Like this, it's been a really fun project. It's a shame I got it done so quickly because I thought it'd give me something to do for a while. Um, now I have another helmet to add to the arsenal of helmets that I've got dotted around my room. And hopefully this will be a full suit because I have, I think, three or four uh, helmets, maybe more, that um, actually including Groot, I've got about five, where I was, oh yeah, I'll start with the helmet and then I'll make the rest of the body and then I'll decide it would just be a display piece. So while I do want to make the body for this, I did start with this being a display piece as the intention, rather than going for, I'm going to make a full cosplay. Um, because odds are now I've said I'm just doing it as a display piece, I will go and make the full cosplay. Um, again, I'm not going to guarantee it because I don't know if I will, but hopefully this will become full cosplay, otherwise here ends the video. And at some point in the future I'll go over how you do the eyes for Iron Man suits and things. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna end this video here. I just want to show you how nice and light this thing is as well, because it's made out of foam. There is not a single worry about it being too heavy on your head. There is my best creation yet. Beautiful. I've just reviewed all the clips I have to put together, and I'm sorry this is such a long video. I just want to say a proper thank you for watching this far through. Um, I know just how long these videos are, so I've added a few little clips at the end to just show how uh, stupid I can be sometimes. Um, there's one of me trying to put the faceplate back on this helmet here, and there's one of me trying to work out whether the lighting is going to work for this um, for the end clip because I was slowly losing light outside, and this light is quite harsh. You can see I've got massive bags under my eyes. Um, I was out drinking last night, and I got uh, very, very drunk and very, very ill last night and this morning. Um, but... The miracle of banana milkshake is what has kept me, and a cup of tea is what has got me back to uh, finishing the video. But yeah, thank you for watching. Enjoy these two clips of me being an idiot and looking very serious, trying to work out whether the lighting is any good.